We're good. We're fucking good at this. Totes good. We've done it like 42 times. No, we're up to like 49 now. 49 after last week? Yeah. 49 times we've done yeah, this. Yeah. And 50 as of tomorrow. Oh my God. I know. Hey, you're listening to Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 213. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. We're going to continue the arc of the good vibes. We're talking about the Commander Legends set review. Set review. Now hit our theme song. Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? Whole shit ton is going down, and I'm putting an expletive on it because this is a very big week. We're going to do the review of the set proper for Commander Legends. We've got a couple of people to thank, a couple of stories to tell. Yep. But before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. They're a source for all your gaming needs. Very much so. I've got my Commander Legends ordered. I've got stinky onion bag packs ordered. They have singles available now. Use promo code CCO Fusion 5, 5% off your order. Get your Commander Legends. If you're a patron over at patreon.com slash CCO Podcast, we are planning a little bit of a, a sealed deck thing. You can partake if you want. We talked about it a little bit, but more importantly, get your Commander Legends sealed product so we can do V open flippy dot drinky <laughs> <laughs> you know how people call it vdh i'm calling it vopen flippy dot drinky sure it's gonna be fun it could be a good time hey, what the? you fucking guy fucking guy hope, you, know. hope, hope the elevator breaks with him in it yeah and then he's stuck yeah, yeah i don't want him to fall he's a good guy ah oh, well he's what a guy seven out of ten at best yeah at, at six and a half. Oh, <sighs> very bad yeah. very bad so speaking of six and a half We've got a couple people to thank. Oh. Total six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned the Patreon supporters. One of the patron benefits is getting a nickname. We've got an increased pledge this week. Already has a nickname. This is Seaburn Visor. Don't know if I'm saying either of those names Ooh, right. That's Sideburns Vizier. S yeah, the Sideburn Vizier. Oh, I love when I hear the name and I remember the nickname. Yeah, I feel real, it makes yeah, me feel very, like I'm paying attention. Much so increased his pledge. We appreciate the support. If you want a Patreon nickname, if you want to be part of the Discord, the sealed deck, the V open flippy dot drinky. Patreon.com slash CCO podcast. Place to be. We do appreciate it. Helps us procure the packs the giveaway prizes the youtube equipment a, a potential new video editor all this jazz and of course all of the youtube content coming out this this week this month right we, we got a we got a big slate today as we're both wearing our cco shirts we're ready to fucking go yes yes very much so we've got set review today set yeah. review proper like traditional yeah we're going to talk about the the set not the legendary things legendary like stuff three cards yeah <laughs> <laughs> Legend, the three legendary cards we're going to talk about for you guys is going to be tomorrow. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and there'll be accompanying videos for the, if you're, if you're watching them, great. If you're not, make sure you go to YouTube, like, and subscribe. Do the thing, right? Yeah, some cool stuff there. If you're listening to the cast, it'll be there. We're going to do reprinted legendary creatures video review, new yes. ability review. We're going to do some hits and misses, right? Yeah. And, of course, the Commander Legends... <sighs> What, what do we call it? Extravaganza is going to be capped by mother ass fucking open flippy boxing matches, including I what I'm sure is going to equate to a sudden death super pack match. Oh, probably. I'm sure that we'll probably rig the results that we just have to do it. Cause that's how it usually ends up because we would never do something like that on purpose. Oh, no, we never rig fights. Ever. Never. That is not how things are done in the nation. Nobody has ever taken a dive. No. Unless it's like off of a diving board into some water, because into some beer, that'd be gross. I would dive right in with my mouth open. Do not Google that. But you, like your <laughs> eyes would be all sticky. And Don't stuff. care. Like you got to think. Don't about Google the, that either. You got to think about the aftermath of such a thing. Like yeah, it's awesome. You're swimming in beer. You're like, oh, this is the best. But then you're gonna get out of the the pool of beer. Nope, never would. And it's like it's probably gonna be kind of warm. There's a little bit of chlorine in it. So like, well, if you're drinking Corona, there might be some formaldehyde in it. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you're going to kind of have that like bar at the end of the night smell, like where you just smell like a dirty carpet. Oh, that's my deodorant smell. And, and then you're going to just be laying on the beach towel and that's going to bake into you. <laughs> right? Like, Maybe I can finally look like I get a tan. I'll, I'll dive into some like some stout. <laughs> I just come out looking like fucking Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's great. Oh my that's God. great. You got a you got a thank you story as well. 
I do. Mr. Robert Bishop. Very much so. You remembered the I name. I remembered the name. Stay away from her, you bish, on the Discord. Sent me a Zerzoth. I was, we were talking a couple of weeks ago about how much, oh, fuck, I can't find one. This is ridiculous. It's driving me insane. I need one for Torbran. And he was like, yo, I opened two of them. Him and his son like to play Jumpstart together. Yes. Which is awesome. So you, they buy like four packs at a time and they play Jumpstart. You can get four packs of Jumpstart at a time? I don't know what kind of miracle he's working, but he's Holy doing it. Holy shit. And one of them had an extra Zerzoth, so he sent it to me. It came in the mail last week, but I get my mail to here. Yes. And nobody told me. What a bunch of dicks. Right? So I didn't get it until yesterday. Downgraded from six and a half to fucking six. Right? Everyone that works here. Trash. Yeah. Every one Except of them. Except the person, the persons, that have left the case of beer out in the newsroom for like three weeks now. Yeah. Every week we come here, Brando looks in the box and it's like, oh, there's, there's, there's still beer in here. fucking beer in here still. What the fuck? <laughs> right? Let's work on that. <laughs> yeah. So we've got beer chilling in the fridge for in between this review and the next one. Yes. We well, Big oh. thank you to Mr. Bish for the card. I, I, I very much appreciate you. Very much. So I've been telling Brando to go to Fusion and get the Zerzoths that they have there because every time I look, they have them in stock, but every time he doesn't, they're all sold out. Yep. I wonder why. <laughs> what if I just showered you in Zerzoths for Christmas? Oh, fuck. I'd be like... I'd be diving into a pool of Zerzoth. I'll be diving into a <laughs> pool of beer. Who will get the most paper cuts? <laughs> It'll be worth it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's check the notes. Let's okay. make sure we've done everything. Okay. While oh. you're looking at notes, oh. I have a quick story. I just Hold want on. to tell everybody. The hint. Oh, the hint. The, this is the hint. I had to tell Ryan during the, <laughs> in between the, the pre-show and now. You know what he was doing? He was giving us a thumbs up. It's Clark. <laughs> <laughs> it's Clark, baby. He's happy to see you. So if you gave us your favorite card from the set, your favorite, oh, your favorite card from the set, your favorite legendary card from the set, and you guessed Clark, you get maximum entries for the dirty onion bag sack of packs to crack. Rattled that off real fast on practice. You did. That yeah. is excellent. It's yeah, like, yeah. I do the intro, you say that. Yes. <laughs> well, I don't know which one takes more takes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me check the notes. You tell your story. I'll chime in like I usually do. Okay, so with Commander Legends, there is a card that we're going to talk about later. I'm not going to spoil it, but I refuse under any circumstance to play it in VDH. That probably spoils what it is. If you were in the game last night, so if you're Zach or if you're F.U. You Smitty oh, yeah. or if you're Von Doom, you know which card I'm talking All about. All those guys are totally medium. I know, right? They're just fine. Yeah. But I had a great game with them as the send-off to my Atraxa list, which I will no longer be able to play on VDH. Oh, because you're, because you're, oh, I know I'm, what it is. Because I'm putting this card in it and now everybody knows what it is. And Ryan's going to roll his eyes at this one. That deck usually gives me a couple of stacks pieces and I just get fucking beat because I have no protection. Yes. That deck last night, Ryan, it stacked so hard, I still feel guilty. Wow. Like, I shut him down and I got blown out by a barrier breach and just immediately rebuilt. And then I got blown out by the same barrier breach again. Oh, yeah. And Von Doom thought he was real smart. And then I just locked him right back down again. I had a tangle wire with like nine counters you put the on old it. The chastity and... belt with the electric wire on it. Oh, dude, it was like at the end of the game. It's like, oh my god, I can't. I ultimated an Ugin. Oh man, that is the fucking best. Like, <laughs> oh dude, like it was just, it was just brutal. They each had one permanent, and I stole it. Stole them both. Oh man. One of them was a planeswalker. I ultimated it. You know what? You know oh. what? The ultimate expression of archetype is doing it despite and in spite of whatever your opponents are doing. You know when I play Hogak and I just I say just I'm gonna graveyard so hard, I'm gonna graveyard right through the graveyard hate. Yeah. That's the ultimate expression of graveyard deck. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if there's 15 players trying to stop what I'm doing. I'm just going to do my thing through that. Yeah. And not that not that my deck is broken and not that any yeah. c like card in your deck is broken. The strategy is not a broken one. It's a powerful one because it's the ultimate expression of yeah. that, that strategy. It, it was just a great send-off to a deck that I, I really enjoy, but I just because I want to make it as good as it can be, I have to wait until... 
like 2027 20, before I can play it again. Ah, uh, yeah, at so least. Atraxa and Norin, they're gonna <laughs> be retired from the V. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they can, maybe they can sit on your on your play mat when you're doing open flippy V. <laughs> <laughs> they can hang out with me and like old friends bringing me luck. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. Actually, somebody asked me that. Hey, can we play Norin? I said no. No. <laughs> no, we absolutely cannot. No, that's like, well. What's the worst that could happen? I said confusion in the ranks. And yeah. the other guy was like, Yeah, no. Nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah, possibility storm confusion in the ranks or some shit, right? Like, Welcome to hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. bad. So let's let's take a look at the cards. We got Scryfall up. We are ready to review the set proper. No legendaries. That's going to be tomorrow and YouTube throughout the month of November. You're going to find all that. Let's see if we can find anything that fits into the ultimate expressions of any archetypes that we favor or generally good cards. Maybe we'll spend a little bit of time on the jank shit, the stuff that we like, because you're listening to us. You obviously like us. And That's why you're here. You've heard 18 other casts talk about the same, like, opposition agent, beat to death, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's look at some cards. Let's uh, let's get to it. we got a jam-packed week. Brr! Okay, first card is a dink to lip slapper. Oh, man. So it slaps it's... your dink up until it hits you in the lips. Oh, baby. And... It's it's going to slap things. It's going to slap your dink right around the back, over to the top of your head, and it's going to whap you like an elephant trunk. Going to give you two black eyes. Oh, it's going to give you... You're going to give yourself the Roman helmet. I'll bet you everybody's just... Everybody knows what we're talking about. It is a chroma's as well. Oh, man. This card. Give it a read. A chroma's will is an instant. An instant. For white three, choose one. If you control your commander, you choose both. Thing the first. Creatures you control gain flying vigilance and double strike until end of turn. Thing the second. Creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible, and protection from colors until end of turn. Mother ass. Jesus. I think that got every CCOism in our vocabulary. I think it did. We, we've we used them all. We might as well just sign off the show now. Join us tomorrow for the legendary creature portion of the. <laughs> <laughs> Were we idiots to start with this? Like this could this could be the best card in the set. This is a good card. This is a good ass card. Lots of people are gonna play this. Wait, I got it. I got it. Oh, I don't want to leave four mana open. No, you don't. Granted, you could. This could be used very defensively because it keeps your creatures alive. It makes you block and not die for the crack back. It gains you your life back, but mostly I think this card is going to be used on offense. Yeah. Think of um, what's what's the enchantment? The lifelink and double strike enchantment? You know the one. I do. But you know the one. It's like white, yeah. white, 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 white. 15? Yeah. Yes. Every, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know the one. This doesn't replace that, I don't think. No. But this is certainly awesome because it does anything you want it to provided you control your commander it does everything you want it to. <laughs> yes it does every single thing i guess moral of the story if you open this card put it in white decks if you're going wide in white or boros or whatever it that's the thing if you're playing an attacky deck that has lots of creatures and is if, white yeah just play it. if you're going wide in and you're playing white play it if you're going tall in white and you're like you just play it play it yeah. if you're playing some kind of control strategy and you're in white that is focused around landing your commander even something as simple as as simple as grand arbiter like classic control deck ultimate expression of control this goes in here because it saves grand arbiter yeah right like it's a good ass card man if you're playing a bunch of hate bears fucking play it it lets you block flying creatures it lets you attack over like the token deck if you have one creature to gain life because it gives you shit flying. Yeah. This is a good ass card. It's a good ass card. Okay, so we've done this is kind of set review part three, right? Yes. We've done white, we've done black, blue, and green. If you want to listen to those, podcasts are available. Episode what, two eleven and two twelve, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Both video on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. So we're gonna skip over like we talked about Archon of Coronation. I'm not sure we need to touch on Austere Command, even though it is like a prolific card in the format. It's, it's just being reprinted, right? Great reprint. Yes. If you, so if you need one, now's the time. It's the kind of card that always slowly ticks up, right? It'll get to about like 10 or $11, then they'll reprint it back down to 2 Then it'll go up again, and then they'll reprint it down to 2 every couple of years, right? And even if you don't have a spot for it now, if you see one, pick it up. Because yep. it's going to be a card that eventually you might want, and it's just it's a good time to pick those up. Yeah, very much so. We touched on Court of Grace already. Next card I want to talk about. 
Okay. I want to talk about this one only because it's Brando's recommendation for the Ryan Alter of the week. Oh, God. And it's Cage of Hands. Because <laughs> look at all those hands, Ryan. What are none of those hands doing? There is so much potential for middle fingers. <laughs> right? There's not a single middle finger on that card, and there could be up to 12. <laughs> You're right. I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe like, th- maybe the altar auctions at Christmas time will just be middle finger altars. Ooh. <laughs> Every <laughs> Thursday on our Facebook page, also. Y- yeah, I was just thinking like brash taunter. I still got cancels. I've got foreign language and foil cancels left. <laughs> I've got cage of hands. <laughs> <laughs> Are th- is Cage of Hands playable? Let's give it a read. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and you can pay white one to return it to its owner's hand to enchant something better. It's not incredibly powerful, but it's certainly playable. Well, oh, if there's 58 middle fingers on it, it's incredibly oh, powerful. Goddamn right it is. Okay, let's... I think one of the last white cards I want to touch on, and this is just maybe to sum up white a little bit. We talked about it a little bit, but this is Keeper of the Accord, a 3-4 human soldier for white 3 at the beginning of each opponent's end step. If that player has more Creech than you, you get a 1-1 white soldier creature token. That's good. That's like land tax, but for creatures. And at the beginning of each opponent's end step, if that player controls more land than you, you search your library for a basic planes card, put it onto the battlefield, tapped. That's pretty good. That is good. That has Remora. Remember we established Remora, not as in Mystic Remora, but as in the little fish that oh, sucks yeah. onto somebody that's doing something big yes. so that it can get benefit from being close to the big thing? Yeah. That's what this is. Somebody's getting more creatures, now I'm getting creatures. Somebody's ramping land, I'm getting more land. This is great. This is a card that is perfect or timely in that we just were at Zendikar and the land ramp, the land fall, the extra land decks are prolific right now and we have seen some very very powerful land getting cards in this set in green that i don't think we've talked about yet and we Eh. i guess we have to Ah, because now is the time to do it listen we don't have any moral obligation to be a set review podcast and we have no obligation to assume that we are the only podcast that our listeners listen to. Nah, that's true. Right? I just want to make sure that we're covering all of our bases because people rely on us to get the the topical deets, the most up-to-date, most topical topics of conversation, Ryan. The topical deets? That sounds like something I'd say. Well, I stole it. Now it's mine. Now it's <laughs> something that I say. Should we talk about Seraphic Greatsword again, Ryan? Should we touch on that again? Oh, phallic, flaccid greatsword? Should we remind everybody that that card is trash? Can we call it seraphic not-so-great sword? That's an understatement, (laughs) Ryan. It's the worst card in history, I think. How about we go to Triumphant Reckoning? Did we talk about that one already? That's not going to be our last white card. Triumphant Reckoning, the white, 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 six sorcery, return all artifact, enchantment, and planeswalker cards from your graveyard to play? That one? That's the one. That's fine. What I want to say about this card is cool art, first of all. It's got a Johnny and Karn and Chandra. Sure. Right? Kind of like coming back from the dead or something. They're I don't know. They're dead, are they? I don't think so. Maybe Why didn't they pick planeswalkers that were dead? There's lots of them. No, maybe it's just a fucking reckoning in a flash of light and a burst of ether. Despair turned into hope and defeat turned into victory. That's the corniest. I don't like this card anymore. Well, that flavor text just ruined this card for me. What I wanted to highlight with this card is what I think is going to be a fairly prolific course correction over the next, let's call it year of Commander. I know this is the year of Commander, but over the next year, like 2021, we're going to maybe see a little bit of a correction away from, or at least parallel to, that downward tick in CMC, that fish, that hyper-efficiency commander deck that people are striving to get towards, that trend towards the CEDH-type builds. We're going to see cards like this that are moving us back in line with 6-drop tribal. Now, are we going to actually see that, or is this just going to become a piece of draft chaff that nobody plays because it costs 9? Well, that is that is the other side of the coin, right? And... What I think is going to happen is things like the reprinting of three visits or other two and three drop mana rocks and ramp that are good, like the 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 Skyclave relic or whatever. Sure, is better dark steel ingot. We got a reprint of the eighty dollar three visits, which essentially gives us rampant growth number four or whatever. Right, we're going to see that kind of stuff be favored more and more, like we have been. 
And that's going to power out things at the eight and nine drop slot like Triumphant Reckoning and things in that cycle of mythics from Commander Legends. Mm, we could maybe. What that's going to do is going to force players to prioritize hyper efficient removal like they probably should be doing anyways. My point is we're going to see some of these that could course correct back to the traditional commander from like 10 years ago. Maybe. Maybe. I'm going to give that a 5 out of 10 possibility mm -hmm. of happening. Hey, we've got a predictions follow-up video where we were both very right we on are, many things. We're really smart. Check out that on YouTube later this week. <laughs> that'll, that'll come out soon. Onto the blue stuff? Very much Ooh, so. Actually, hang on. There's one other card I want to talk about. In as I want to do the whole cycle right now, and it's the Vows. Oh, yeah, being reprinted. There's Vow of Duty, Vow of Blue, Vow of Black, Vow of whatever, whatever. Yeah, Enchantment goes on creature, they can't attack us. And they get bigger in some kind of an ability. Yeah. Very, very cool. I'm very excited they're reprinting them because I missed them before, and they're one of those cards that just... People have picked them up over time, so they're a little bit tricky to get. And I always want to, if I'm going to buy one, I want to buy all of them, and I never can. Yep. So now I can just open them up in this set, and I can finally build that Corona the False God deck I've always wanted. Oh, yeah. Original from Commander 11. We seen them again in 15, and whatever decks they were in in Anthology, that doesn't really count. But yeah. my point is, to follow up what you said, very cool. Great design back from the day, right? Yeah. Like C11, this is kind of, these cards are still a little bit seeing play. They're not staples, but they're being reprinted, so people must like them. I right? think that they're kind of uh, an alternative maybe to, I don't want to say a feel-bad card, but something like a Lignify or a Dark Steel Mutation where you're going to just strip oh, yeah. somebody of their commander or elk them with like an Oko or yeah, something. Yeah, bu budget, can... budget version of Song of the Dryads. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna take away their commander... Like their big attacky commander, but just for you. Yes, they'll 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 get those other two guys. They can still play, do all their stuff. They just can't kill you with it. Yeah, and heaven forbid it's a, it's a black or a red commander, right? Because that <laughs> thing is not hitting you. <laughs> yes. All right, on to the blue stuff. All right, let's skip ahead right to the goods. We're going full frontal first scene. Uh, this is the second scene. It's we're already in blue. I get it. But this is Hull Breacher. This is going to be when we look at some of the financials. This is one of the most expensive cards in the set, provided it's in foil and or full art. Yes, it and was $2 two weeks ago. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, it ain't no more. <laughs> this is Merfolk Pirate, so it's got the relevant Merfolk ability there, and it's got the the 13-year-old rock-hard creature type Pirate, right. which is both good, I think, for the format. Sure. 3-2 for Blue 2, Flash. Of course. Yes. If an opponent would draw a card except for the first one they draw on each of their turns, instead, we get a treasure toke. Sick. Ooh, baby, that is a sick card. It got flash. Of course it has flash. Can you imagine somebody like goes like, oh, Blue Sun Zenith, fucking draw my old deck? <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, nah, dude. <laughs> what if you deck yourself? Well, you don't draw cards. You just get a bunch of treasure. Oh, yeah, that's right. Just, I'm an idiot. No, sir. I will get 100 treasures. And then Thank I'll you. And then I'll Blue Sun Zenith <laughs> and draw my whole deck instead. <laughs> oh, man. So why isn't this card white is the question and people are ragging on this? Because it has flash. Obviously, well, and it's a merfolk, and it's a pirate. None of those things are white. Merfolk sometimes are white, but that's why it's blue. You're right. So I figured it out. I cracked the code. The real Mystery reason. Solved. The real reason this card is blue is because it's in blue's portion of the color pie. If you believe in the color pie, yeah, still, I don't. If you do, this is a blue card, according to Gavin, because blue is the color that stops people from drawing cards. It doesn't make you discard. It doesn't stop you from searching like a Hushwing Griff. Is that the card? Hushwing Feldegriff? No, that's uh, like Avon Mind Sensor. Avon Mind or... Sensor. That's right. It doesn't stop you from searching or whatever. It stops you from drawing cards. Think Narset. This is what Narset does. And people say, well, Smothering Tithe can do that. Well, Smothering Tithe is actually a tax card. Yeah. It taxes you. Right? And they say that Smothering Tithe, Tithe was a little bit of a color pie break. And they're not going to give... The, the get treasures for drawing cards to white, right? It was a tax card. So that's why this card is blue. If anybody's wondering, complaining, griping, apparently that's why. Yeah, just at Gavin. Leave us out of it. Yeah, very much yeah. so. Hull Breacher, very good. If you find one, play it. Yeah. it's. I don't think it's a busted card. It's very, very powerful, but... Yeah, I, mean, I, I think this card gains or gleans its power from flashing it in when somebody's drawing, like, a bunch, where you can get more treasure than what it costs. So you're left with a 3-2 body for free, essentially, right? 
if you play it just like main phase two on turn three or whatever, somebody's going to kill it. Hullbreacher also makes Temple Belt good as hell, hey? Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and Miku Koro, Center of the Sea, and Gaia Reach Sanitarium, the lands that let everybody draw cards. Yeah. Good ass. Oh, it Gaia makes Reach Wheel San of Fortune fucking real good. Man, Gaia Reach Sanitarium is so good now because they just discard a card and you get a bunch of treasure. Oh, titties <laughs> and ass. That is good. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Oh, so oh, that man. card's good. We all knew it was good, but we're going to oh, hit man. it. Because get your hidden tech at CCO. Get them guy reach sanitariums. <laughs> <laughs> okay, blue, blue, blue. Here we go. Should we do body of knowledge? I think lots of people were talking about that. I've seen a couple of people tweeting about it, both because it has a super cool picture on it. Yep. It's a star star for blue, blue, three. Body of knowledge is power and toughness. Reach equal number of cards in your hand. You have no maximum hand size. Whenever body of, body of knowledge is dealt damage, draw that many cards. Draw that many cards. Yeah, you can damage this yourself. I like this in blue red where you just like go earthquake and just draw tons of cards. Yeah. Turns your earthquakes into earthquake plus fucking draw a card. It makes pyrohemia real good. Yo, yeah. yeah I mean anything that can I was like, gonna consistently say it, pump out damage it, real good. It turns earthquake into into blue sun zenith. Oh, yeah, yeah, right? I like that. Yeah, even even if the thing dies, if you go earthquake for 10, this will take 10 even if it's like got one toughness. It'll take 10. You draw 10. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's a cool card. Oh, a good ass one. This card might be the cause of an old deck of mine getting rebuilt. Oh shit. This is Laboratory Drudge. This is a 3/4 zombie horror. I think we've talked about it before, but I just want to touch on it again because it's got the raddest art, which is something that you and I both appreciate. Super appreciate that. It's it's obviously in the same lab that Laboratory Maniac is working at. <laughs> <laughs> and it's at the beginning of each end step, draw a card if you've cast a, a spell from your graveyard or activated an ability from a card in your graveyard or in a graveyard. Give me an example of that. Because I don't, we, we are content creators. We are enfranchised magic players. Yes. But we don't know every single card. Yep. And I can't really think of too many things besides like Spellweaver's Volute that you activate an ability of a card in a graveyard. Is that flashback? Is that what that is? Yes, flashback is casting the card from your graveyard. Reassembling Skeleton is an activated ability that only works when it's in your graveyard. Okay. Yep. There's Bosium Strip, which lets you mill a card and then cast a card from your graveyard. It just lets you cast one, right? Well, that's letting you cast. I'm talking, you have to activate an ability of a card in a graveyard. There's, There's just not very much Brokos of Apex of Power. You can cast it from your graveyard if you're mutating it, because mutating is casting it. That's, that's a cool one. That's still not activating an ability, though. Like, is this one of those cards like Tarmogoyf was, where it said, like, if you have a tribal card or a Planeswalker card in your graveyard... It gets bigger, and everybody's like, well, there aren't any of those cards. And in the future, they printed them, and now Tarmogoyf is a million dollars. Is Laboratory Drudge the the precursor to a whole bunch of activated ability cards that only work if they're in your graveyard? No, there's a bunch. There was one in there was one in Commander 20, Daring Fiend Bonder, which is like black one, and you have to exile it from your graveyard as part of its activation. And then you get to put an indestructible counter on a creature, so you're activating that ability okay. from your graveyard, right? There there are things that do it. They are few and far between. Some of them are jank. Uh, Dread Wanderer is another one from Amonkhet. Return it from your graveyard to the battlefield, but you can only activate it if, you're, like, if your hand is empty. So if it's in your graveyard, you pay three and you return it to the battlefield if you have no cards in hand. So you would return it, you return itself, and then you draw a card at the end step with Laboratory Drudge, and then you could sacrifice, like you play the card out with that you drew from Laboratory Drudge, and then you sacrifice the Dread Wanderer again, and then you get it back, and you can draw a card. Like, okay. there's just there's just random weird stuff that is is the kind of stuff that, oh, it was like this random uncommented for, for limited purposes that you get back, and now you draw a card from Laboratory Drudge. I'm into it. It's kind of like um, a Wave Break Hippocamp, Sure. You draw, it's an enchantment creature. You draw a card if you cast something on somebody else's turn. Yeah. It just gives you a different kind of access to play the game on with cards that are just not really seen in Commander. And that's one of the things I love about like Commander-specific products is they open up this space to play like the other 99.999% of shit that never <laughs> sees play, right? <laughs> I'm into it. 
Uh, should we move? On? Should we talk about mana drain? Everybody knows mana drain. Everybody loves or hates mana drain. Get your mana drains, kids. Get your mana drains now. They're going to be at a low price. If you want to play one, air now quotes. Is the time to pick it up. Air quotes. Low price. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We haven't seen the impact of the collector box yet. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um. Okay. Here. Here. Let's let's hit another one of these. These commander realigning things. Blue, here they blue, are. Blue. Blue. Six. Sorcery. Exile target instant or sorcery card from any graveyard. Copy that spell three times. Cast them for free. Exile mnemonic deluge. That's just that just wins you the game, right? Like that's gonna go in the same deck that time stretch goes in. That's gonna go in the same deck that that. Um... Wasn't that winning more? Because I mean, if you're casting time stretch, you're already copying time stretch. You don't really need mnemonic deluge. Agreed. Like the game's already over. So Agreed. what's the point of this card? Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> but people are going to do it. I guess. I think that you might even put it in, like, even to cast Overrun. Overrun might not win you the game. It might let you kill one player, but then next turn you Mnemonic Deluge, they don't know it's in your hand, you Overrun, 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 or Overrun and its equivalents, whatever they are. Sure. And you can kill the other two players. Right? Yeah. I, I think if... Because it lets you break the rule of Commander three times. Which is always good. Yes. Love if you can break the rule one time, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last blue card that I'm going to talk about. Wrong ass turn. This is an instant for blue two. Target opponent gains control of target creature. Like, I give you F.U. Smitty's creature. Okay. Mm -hmm. if, an, if an attacking or blocking creature changes controllers, it's removed from combat. So you have to do this before combat if you want to fuck with somebody's shit, right? Right. So, like beginning of combat or before combat like main phase one you just say hey okay f you smitty you're giving that card to brando right and it'll stop him from attacking you it's a political thing i can save you right right or who knows end of combat i switch controllers between thing and thing and somebody has an elish norn and it dies like there's there's lots of little just little subtle things you you're gonna kill me and you go before i do but then I give your commander that's got like 20 points on me already. I give it to Smitty. He goes after me. And then you got no blocker. I kill you. Your commander goes away from Smitty. Oh. And then it's Smitty's turn. And it's like I just eliminated you. And it's like it has some really subtle little things. And it's political. And it's just cool. And it's got a great picture. Oh, too. man, does it ever. It's like a mutant chicken with a bunch of spikes sticking out of it. And he's in a library. Like, what's he doing there? He I must think... have taken a wrong turn at Albuquerque. <laughs> Okay. Black. black stuff? Black. Lots of rad, spiky fucking art, hey? Yeah, there kind of is here. This is, yep. This is some shit. We've got an elf sub-theme, an elf graveyard sub-theme that crosses over with green a little bit. We see a lot of Encore in black, which we're going to talk about Encore if we visit a card that has it, but we're going to do it proper on, on a YouTube show. So if you're, if you're into Commander Cookout on YouTube, remember to check that out. I want to talk about Demonic Lord. Do we care about this? No. It's another lose some, draw some. It's like the 14th card that does this. If you're trying to thin out your deck in black, congratulations, you have another card that does that. Thank you, Wizards. Please continue to print one every set. We really appreciate it. When it enters the battlefield, you draw three. And then for the next however long you control it, you lose two life for each card in your hand. So this one is a little bit different, and especially because this would probably come or go into the deck with Blim Comedic Genius, which I'm sure we're going to talk about, yeah. where you give shit away. This is kind of a cool one. This is cool. You, 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 two, right. Three cards is not nothing. Well, three cards is real good. Yeah. yeah. I love drawing three cards. <laughs> Draw three cards every turn. Fuck. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> Elf sub-theme, Commander Legends has given me the inspiration and the tools to finish, what am I calling it? Gak ball? Gak ball. Whole gak elf ball. <laughs> gak ball. <laughs> <laughs> and big thanks to all the Discord members that were helping me out, both with the name and with inspiration and card includes and what have you. Do we care about necrotic hex? The fixed hex? Fixed fex? Sure. Sure. Yeah, give it a read. I love the art. Necrotic hex, black six. Each player sacrifices six creatures. You create six tapped black, black zombies. And by black, black zombies, I mean two, two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought you meant they're extra black. 
They might be. I mean, we don't know what the token looks like yet. I haven't well, seen it. Well, we can review it if we want. The future is now. Ooh. The future is when this episode comes out and people are listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is fixed hex. You don't need six targets for this. Which is great. Yeah, and they added an extra mana on to make it cost seven, which kind of breaks the symmetry of the, the six of everything card, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine, though. It also kills 28 things. I love killing 28 things. So if you're things. playing, what's the thing where Revel and Riches? Each player sacrifices six creatures. Yeah, so this could this could get you going. This could get Mother you going. ass. Yeah. I thought I thought it was just players sacrifice six creatures oh, in no. total. No. Oh no. Wow. Now, this kills a lot of shit. Necrotic Hex is cool, man. That's why it yeah. costs seven. Yeah, and cool art. Hey, that looks like that looks like real old school like uh the the nineteen seventies Lord of the Rings movie, you know? Kinda looks like it belongs on that somewhere. Kinda, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, next controversial card. We are obligated to talk about it. We, this is we, it. We this jumped is... over it. We were in black the last week. Yep. So let's let's do it. What do you think about opposition, Agent Ryan? I think this is card number two that people say, why isn't this white? And there's an explanation. But but before that, let's give it a read. Before... As, if, as if nobody knows what it does. Okay, opposition agent is a 3-2 with flash. Sounds familiar. For three, sounds familiar. One of them is black. You control your opponents while they're searching their libraries. I don't like that wording because I would just make them concede the game. <laughs> nice terramorphic <laughs> expanse, asshole. You lose. Yeah. Well, while you're searching, you also scoop. That's <laughs> awesome. While an opponent is searching their library, they exile each card they find. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though they were any mana of any color to cast them. So with we all know the thing with like what is it Mar Marisil Marilyn of the Morn Song Marilyn whatever. the Morn Song yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Blah, 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 whatever opposition agent what do you think I think it's a hard card to play in the VEDH like you said oh, earlier yeah this is the one that's going in Atraxa I talked yep. about that earlier yep. in the show and uh, takes it away because I mean you you can't play this in VEDH I I think it's hella mega ultra powerful just like Hall Breacher when you flash it in if you play it main phase whatever on turn whatever three four whatever wherever. You know, you've maybe lost some of the oomph of getting somebody on their fetch land, getting somebody on their terramorphic expanse. You've lost that on turn three, right? And what you just said. Turn, I, hold on. Okay. Turn three or four, when it comes down like on curve, if you will, somebody will kill it before anybody like vamp toots. Nobody's going to tutor. So you are stopping something, but you're not because you're just delaying it until somebody uses a removal spell or draws into one. Yeah. And this is going to get somebody when it air quotes gets them at flash speed. Yes. Yeah, I think I I don't think it's as powerful as people think because, and I hate to use the argument, it just dies to removal. Well, mm -hmm. what if they don't have any? Well, what if you're playing in a meta that doesn't like favor tutors that heavily? How powerful is it then? Right? It's like uh. the the thing that this card for me is is it's fetch land to terramorphic expanse. Where one thing is very, very powerful, yep. and one thing is just something that people play because they're playing a three-color deck and they want their deck to go. Yeah. And I think that this card, for me, is like, ugh, kind of a groaner. Because, yes, it's going to turn off the tutor-heavy whatever guy that's searching for 18 things a game. Yep. Yeah, it's turning him off, too, and that's good for the table. But Buddy, who's playing his pre-con with the shitty fetches that are slow or and no other tutors, now they're fucked. Right? Like, now they can't play that Terramorphic Expanse. Now they can't. Oh, you yeah, know, You know yeah. what I mean? And I think that's the the feel bad. It doesn't make the card bad. It doesn't mean the card's so overpowered. But, I mean, it it gives that kind of feel bad when your, like, buddy over here who's already screwed is now yeah. just even more screwed than he was before. You know what? We talk about the scale of Commander. Where are you on the slider? On the one side is, like, really casual, just, like, sitting down with buddies, beer and pretzels, as they say. Yeah. Right? And all the way the other end is the tuned, hyper-competitive CEDH fucking killing machine. Sunglasses with your hood up because you, you want to look like a meth head poker player and nobody knows what you got. <laughs> well, that's not what that stereotype of people's heads in this particular example. <laughs> but you know where I'm talking about on the slider. Oh, yeah. But if we add like if we add a fucking, what would it be, a Z-axis to look at the depth of that slider, it's like, oh, that all the way casual guy that just happens to off curve get his terramorphic expanse turn four after an opposition agent was flashed in in response to somebody's d toots like the opposition agent player and the d toot player are those players right they are of a higher tier deck construction or collection fucking 
they, they have bigger collections, they have more powerful decks, yeah. right? And then this person that's running the Terramorphic Expanse just all of a sudden gets shut off. Right, that is that is your take, is what you're saying. Yeah, and I think that that's I think that's where the main feel bad of this card's going to come from. Because everybody who sees up, op- everybody who's playing opposition agent, yeah. they know what they're doing. Yes, and everybody who's getting opposition agented, they knew they, what they signed. They up knew for. what they fucking did. Yeah, they knew what they did. Yeah, but those other two people at the table, maybe they didn't sign up for that, or maybe just with happenstance, stinky doo da luck. Now somebody's locked out of a game, and that sucks. Yes, yes. Locked out of a game because they're stuck on two lands with a Terramorphic Expanse on the battlefield. Yeah. And yes. It's, it's just shitty. <laughs> no better time for a Blood Moon then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Opposi- opposition agent. New Blood Moon tech. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no... Uh, uh, the other the other kind of side of that casual coin, and, and it's the side that I focus on is because we play casual lots of decks when we go and play at our lgs in 2027 or with the dude bros like there's not a whole lot of tutoring that takes place which with opposition agent in existence i'm thankful for because i don't think it's going to affect anywhere that i play very much agreed if i sit down at the table and we say hey let's kick it up a notch I whip out maybe something like Animar or Zada. You whip out a Traxa Stacks, trying to stop me as a combo player. And then maybe Jesse plays some graveyard deck and Smitty plays like his his Niv-Mizzet deck trying to tr- draw info draw and combo us, kill us with pinging. Yeah. That card gets really good because we're Shit, all yeah, playing tutors in that deck. Shit, yeah. Right? So, again, just where do you exist on the slider and... Try yeah. to avoid the random feel bads if you're if you know you're playing against somebody that's running a whole bunch of like slow fetch tutor just, land yeah, cards. Yeah, just a bunch of slow trash. Just be aware what you're doing when this card goes into your deck. I suppose. Next up, let's let's do it again. Black, black, black. Six Ooh. for a sorcery. Profane, tr- pro- profane transfusion. E- easy for me to say. Cool art on this one. Oh, rad as f. Two target players exchange life totals. You get an XX colorless horror artifact creature token where X is the difference between those life totals. I love how it's an XX artifact horror, so I can use the same token that I'm already using for... For Xian Processor? No. Uh, actually, I think that is a is horror. That, but also like also the, the wrath that gives you a, an XX horror equal to the number of creatures that died. Oh, there... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope Joe can find what that card is. Put it on the screen. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phyrexian Rebirth. Is that it? I yeah, that is it. Oh, oh dang. That's two times I remembered today. Oh, man, we're holy, good at this. It is, holy shit, I feel like a professional podcaster right now. We should talk about another card so that what? people start, start thinking highly of me. You know what? Profane Transfusion, man, that is a cool card. That's got rad art. It goes it goes in decks that already exist. The Life Gain, Life Drain, maybe the Orzhov deck. It goes. It has a home. It, it has a home. It has it, a home. Is it going to see play? I... In Maybe. that in that deck, it, it could right. If that deck is playing the like, if it's got the big black mana package, and if it's got Smothering Tithe, like it could feasibly play that card on like pretty early in the game. The question is then, are there two is players that are going to have yeah. lots of different life? If you, if you're switching your life with somebody else's, very much so there is yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You slap a little equipment on that horror, and you just crash in with that. That horror after you gave somebody your four life, <laughs> right? Like that's a good ass thing to do. Uh, okay, how about Zat Sat Zat's will? Zat's will. Yeah, this is the will cycle, which we'll be covering in a later video this week or month. I th- I don't think that this is a very good one. It's an instant choose one. If you have your commander, if you control a commander, anybody's, you can choose both. It's five mana. Each opponent sacrifices a creature they control of the greatest power. Cool. So, sack your biggest thing. Okay. Or exile all cards from all graveyards. All opponents' graveyards. Oh, all opponents' graveyards. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Then create X01 black thrall creature tokens where X is the greatest power among creatures exiled this way. Let me tell you why I'm excited about this card. And, and hold on. One thing. They resolve if you have both. If both things happen, they sack and then you create the things. So they have to sack their biggest thing, and then the biggest thing of those biggest things is it's how thralls. many thralls you get. Yeah, we're gonna get a foil zero one black thrall creature token, and that's awesome. Oh baby, I'm very excited. Yeah, for that. yeah, yeah. For for the for the thrall guy, what's his name again? I'm putting you on the spot again. Can, can you do it? 
Edric Czar, master breeder. Got him. Damn it. I was so close. Yeah, I, got I had him. the Czar. I had the. the oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, I was so yeah. close. You play that card, right? I sure do. I do too. And that's why I'm excited for the token. I'm I am very too. pumped for that. So yeah. thanks, Wizards, for that one. Yeah. Next big money included in the set. Whole big money, big money, big money. Vamp tutor. It's a tutor. It's a really good tutor. If you're looking to pick one up, now is a great time to do it. This is a good tutor for the one tutor that you're allowed on the Spice Calculator. Yeah. Put so, them in your decks, kids. Yep. If you got them, play them. If you don't, see if you can pick one up. They're cool. You gotta get them, gotta get them foil full art ones. Trade them straight into fusiongamingonline.com. They buy cards and get yourself a whole new booster box. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I think we should mention real quick reprint victimize. Yep. Good I'm, card. Not saying, I'm not saying it's underplayed. I'm not saying it's underrated. But I think that lots of people forget it exists or they just kind of don't see it when they're building their decks. It's a sorcery for black two. Choose two target creature cards in your graveyard, sack a dude, and then put those two creatures into play. Yep. It's your two for one things. Graveyard strategies are super fucking there right now. It's a good ass card. Play victimize. Yep. I, I think that's a public service announcement. Yep. Best victimize I ever did. Turn two. Victimize, got back, Grave Titan, Massacre Worm. Nice. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best one that I ever did, which isn't as good as yours, but I'm going to tell the story too. I had just used Defense of the Heart to get yep. Elish, Norn, and Shieldred into play. Ooh. And then they were immediately killed. And on my next turn, I played a Bird of Paradise and victimized it to put Elish, Norn, and Shieldred back. Yeah, man. Victimize and, is good. And you know what I got back with Shieldred on my next turn? Bird of Paradise. Bird of Paradise. <laughs> Just to stick it in and break it off, baby. Yeah, that's it. Let's talk about some red stuff. On to red. Red, again, we see Encore on several cards. We see Pirates. Pirates are in Grixis this time, right? Yes. Or, no, they're in they're in red-blue this time, right? Well, they were in Grixis Grixis originally. before. Yeah, yeah. We got elves and, like, rogues and shit in black. Now yeah. we've got now we've got Pirates in red and blue this time. Pyrizit? So, Prizit? Prizit? Pyrizit. Yeah, neither of those sound yeah, good. Yeah, that, that doesn't work. I'm happy to see Blasphemous Act get a reprint. Yep. Su speaking of reprints. Surprisingly expensive card. Yeah, it's like it's like Austere Command, right? It's it's just the catch all wrath that goes into decks that play that color. Yep. And it goes down to two bucks or so when it's reprinted. It slowly ticks back up to eight or ten every couple years we see it. Everything we said about Austere Command, we're gonna say about Blasphemous Act, get them now. Yep. You're gonna eventually want one. Yep, very good. How about coercive recruiter? This is this is a pirate card right it goes in the pirate deck when it enters when it or another pirate enters a battlefield you get a creature and gains haste and you hit your opponent with it then you give it back at end of turn this is the threat and effect for the set and it happens to be on the creature type that cares about threatening essentially right and it turns that creature into a pirate and it is not a goblin this card is bullshit <laughs> This this should be Brando says every pirate in the set should have been a dockside extortionist. Yes, everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe on our hit and miss episode later on this month on YouTube, maybe that card will come up. I I have a sneaking suspicion that it will, Ryan. Yeah, very much so. How about the Ember Wild Captain, the Gin Pirate? He's a both a genie and a pirate. Yeah, he is. Uh, well, he's something. He looks just like a bunch of fire and a lantern to me. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Being on fire, not a good idea on a boat. Because boats have sails, and sails start on fire, and then your boat doesn't work. This what? guy's an idiot. Also, boats are made out of wood, something that traditionally has been used d to burn. This guy's <laughs> a double idiot. Yes. This guy's so... I'll bet you when he did his Commander Legends preview video where he picked what was going to be reprinted in the set, I'll bet you he was wrong on fucking everything because he's so stupid. Most likely. <laughs> he's a 4-2 for 4. Enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch, so cool. Monarch important because it's reaching into all five colors, kind of equally in Commander Legends, right? Yep. When an opponent attacks you while you're the Monarch, Ember Wild Captain deals damage to that player equal to the number of cards in their hand. I'm surprised it doesn't say, like, deal two damage or whatever to any target so you can, like, kill their thing that's attacking you because they want to become the monarch. And then you're just like, uh, yeah, no, Mr. fucking whatever, Mr. Green, <laughs> yeah. take eight. Yeah. Right? You attack me. I, I'm so red, I'm going to attack you while you're attacking me. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought that that one might be a little bit of a Brando card because you like the Monarch. I actually do like this card. I like Monarch. I like the defensibility of it. I, I'm secretly maybe going to try this in Noran. Oh, yeah? 
that. Yep, I'm going to cut another card that I don't think I ever got to play because I keep adding cards to Norn and then cutting them before I get to play them because <laughs> I can't play them in VDH. So this is probably going to go in for something else that never got played, and we'll, we'll see how it goes because I want to add more card draw to Norn. Yep. And Monarch's a pretty decent way of doing that. Yep. Here's one of the cards that we're going to touch on later today in our video when we record it, because I was fucking right on it. This is Hellkite Courser, 6-5 Flying Dragon for Red Red 4, your favorite CMC. It is. It's a gooder. Let's see what it does. When it enters a B, you may put a commander from your command zone onto the battlefield. It gains haste. Return it to the command zone at the beginning of the next end step. Ooh. Huh. Ooh. Spicy. Spicy. You just get your commander onto the battlefield for free. What if you blinked this and just like blinked it in and out, in and out, in and out, and in response to the blink, or like in response to resolving this guy's ability, you could sacrifice your commander and then you can get it back and get it back, get it back. Commanders with ETB abilities become really good with this guy. Or planeswalker commanders. Planeswalker commanders. Well, you can activate loyal loyalty abilities at instant speed while you're uh, waiting for the ability to resolve. Oh, uh, yeah. But you can get it. And then if you have some way to blink this guy after you get your commander in and then you get your priority again, yeah. you get your Planeswalker ability on the stack. Well, there's a way of doing it. I guarantee there's a way of doing it. Oh, yeah. 100% there is. It just opens you up to removal a little bit, right? Yeah. But this guy does let us interact with the command zone for free if you think that the six mana gets you a six power flyer, right? Yeah. Or it's six mana gets your commander out for free and you incidentally just have the upside of a six five flyer. If it had haste... This card would be so amazing. Well, yeah. It's already really good, but I think you should, you should have haste. Yeah, I like this at, like... If given things haste, it itself should have haste. That's just uh, how yeah, I that feel. That could be a thing. That's just how I feel. Maybe he's, like... I think that the flavor is your commander's riding on its back, and it, like, jumps off and, like, comes down and just kills something, but in the process of it coming down and killing something, yeah, he, he dies or something, right? <laughs> he breaks both of yeah, his legs Yeah, that's a good flavor. Down. I like that card. <laughs> how about Port Razor? Here's our next pirate. It's another thing that isn't Dockside Extortionist yes. or a goblin at all, but it, it is a pirate. It's an orc. That's like a big go a big it, goblin. It's the shitty goblin is what that is. That's oh. like Naga and Snake. <laughs> okay? Orcs are the, of the, are the Nagas of red. Give it a read. Red, red, three. Whenever Port Razor deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control. After this combat phase, there is an additional combat phase. Port Razor can't attack a player. It has already attacked this turn. So you, it's like an extra combat thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's It's... It's put it good. in your put it in your Moreg extra combat decks, right? Exactly. Yeah, okay. That's exactly where that goes. Okay, Soul Fire Eruption. Red, 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 six. Oh, Sorcery. Choose any number of target creatures, planeswalkers, and or players. For each of them, exile the top card of your library, then Soul Fire Eruption deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to that permanent or player. You may play the exiled cards until the end of your next turn. This sucks. So you draw, th you chaos draw three, and those three z cards as converted mana cost deal damage to the three things that you chose. It sucks. For nine. For nine. So you could hypothetically do zero, exile three cards off the top of your library, and since you've already played in Mountain because you need fucking nine <laughs> to do this, you've discarded a card, milled yourself for three, and done nothing this yes this card has a very low low side yes and the the upside is like i guess i'll play these next turn if we could if we can stack the top three cards of our library if you have like some scroll rack business going on or uh there's that guy that lets you reorder the top 10 sure yes but no yeah. I, I really don't think that this card will ever be worth it often enough to even bother including it. And there's not very often that I say that, but I think that this card is too bad to even bother with. What if somebody says, well, it's card draw on red? They're wrong. B play something else, yeah. right? There's yeah, like it, there's it like 50 nine. things that do other forms of chaos card draw that cost less that let you cast the shit on your turn or whatever, right? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pay three to do that. Wheel of Misfortune. Shit, yeah. Read it. Wheel of Misfortune <laughs> give is you a sorcery. The, give you the fucking novel. For red, too. Each player secretly chooses a number zero or greater. Then all players reveal those numbers simultaneously and determine the highest number and lowest numbers revealed this way. Oh my god, we're only halfway through. Wheel of Misfortune deals damage equal to the highest number to each player who chose that number. Each player who didn't choose the lowest number discards their hand 
then draws seven. Holy fuck. Okay, so the highest number takes that much damage. Yes. The lowest number doesn't get shit. The two then, middle numbers get to discard their hand, draw seven. Yes. Well, so does the highest number. Lowest number gets fucking nothing. Middle two numbers get to discard their hand, draw seven. Top number gets to take some damage, discard their hand, draw seven. It's like Goblin Game and Wheel of Fortune all at the same time. It sort of is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I figured you'd like it. This is I do like, like it. If, if Ryan and Brando had a baby. <laughs> yes. It's like, it's like people at Wizards are listening to us and saying, hey, Brando likes Goblin Game. Ryan likes Wheel of Fortune. Let's marry those two cards. <laughs> yeah, let's put them together and give them this deformed little baby. Yes. And we get Wheel of Misfortune. Yes. I think this card is awesome. I think if you get one, you need to find a place for it. And then immediately upon playing it, it's going to be fun. Yes. You're going to be running around your house looking for, like, things so that you can try and figure out how you choose your number. Well, just You're not going to have any just cheating a, going a, on. a paper and a pad. Fuck all that. You're going to get different colored Lego bricks or, like... <laughs> balls of lint. Mittens or little balls of string or... I don't know if you have a bunch of cats, you could just get a bunch of them. <laughs> oh, that it's, would be a stinky wheel of misfortune. God, this card is super fun. Do you just roll D20s and just see, okay, this is your fucking life. This is the <laughs> amount that you pick. Oh. Somebody rolls a 20, they take 20, but they get to draw seven. Oh do you my just, God. Do you cast this card and just say, yeah, I'm picking fucking 20. Does anybody want to like do more than that? Because... <laughs> Like, then you're, you're guaranteed to draw cards, but you have to take more than 20. <laughs> I know I'm not getting the lowest, so I know that I get to draw cards. Like, <laughs> is this just, like, Wheel of Fortune, but it deals 20 to you? <laughs> is that what this card is? It's that's what I... It's fuck, man, that's be. good. Oh, it's a super good card. That's good. It's better than Wheel of Fortune if you're willing to take 20. Let's just set the number. Because nobody's going to fucking pay 20 except no. me, right? <laughs> this is better than Wheel of Fortune if you're willing to take 20, because one guy doesn't get to do it. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't want to take 20. All right. Well, I'll get to draw none. Sorry. <laughs> well, if he picks the lowest. Because what if everybody else just decides, oh, yeah, okay. So he, oh, no, because they can't all go together. They have to at least match you if you tell them what number you're going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as soon as you start to fucking tell people, eh? just change the dynamic of the card. I want to hear stories on Twitter of how this fucking oh, yeah. card. I wanted to play this card until I got to like choose that number. Like I don't even I didn't even give a shit what the card did. I just wanted to play this. <laughs> I didn't care what it did. I oh, just wanted baby. to pick numbers in secret and then reveal them all at the same time. I'm very excited for Wheel of Misfortune. That's a gooder, and it's it's a few bucks, hey. And the foil ones are going to be a few bucks. Yeah, we're gonna you're gonna pay some money for that one, and I think that that's fine. It's it's a not a functional reprint of Wheel of Fortune, but it's like a it's a as budget as we're gonna see. Yeah. Wheel of Fortune. So pick them up, play them, it's good. Okay, on to green, and I got two quick hits that are going to just go bang, bang. Quick hits? Hit, hit us with them. I got Quickly. Two, <laughs> two, two right in a row. Apex Devastator. We called him Apex Idiot last time. Ten mana, four Cascades, ten, ten. Put them in your Cascade decks, kids. Yes. This card makes me want to build that team or Cascade guy where you get land or whatever. Next oh, yeah. one, Bio Waste Blob. This Say is, it right. Uh, what did you call him? Shit blob. Shit blob. Yeah, this is other oozes get plus one, plus one. This goes in your ooze tribal deck that I'm sure is going to get made with the ooze legend that we're going to review oh, next, you are next tomorrow. Goddamn correct. Okay. Green monarch cards for seven mana, eight, eight elk. Doesn't look like an elk. Looks like a dinosaur with a tree stump for a head. Yes. <laughs> Become the monarch. As long as you're the monarch permanent, you control how hexproof. That's really good. Lots of mana production and reprinted elf staples elvish visionary fairhaven elf findhorn elf first time non from the vault 20 printing of this art in real paper magic card findhorn elf since ice age is that when he was it was it was reprinted in in on digital platforms so that doesn't matter i don't count and it was reprinted in from the vault 20 but after that like we don't have this art on findhorn elf in paper so this is this is an important one. That's cool. Yeah, that's a cool one. I like that I, one. I dig that lots. Yeah. Hunter's Insight, another good reprint, I think. Imperious or Immaculate Magistrate, Imperious Perfect, good elf reprints. Kamal's Will. Let's give this one a read. Kamal's Will is an instant for green three with the will ability of if you control a commander, it does both the things. The willity. The willity. I like it. Thing the first. Until end of turn, any number of target lands you control become 1-1 one, one elemental creature tokens with vigilance, indestructible, and haste. There's still lands. Thing the second, choose target creature you do not control. Each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to that creature. So, 
it's animating lands, right? And it's game banging the fuck out of something. Yes. <laughs> That's what it does. <laughs> I like it. And it's an instant. Those yeah. wills get a lot better when they become instants. Yeah, man. Well, this is the one that you play with Kamal, who we'll talk about tomorrow. Yep. And then you just win the game. Yeah. You. Yeah. It's a, it's an I win card with Kamal. It's a it's a pretty good card otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Magus of the Order. This is the sorcery cycle of Magi. And this is the creature version of Natural Order. Ooh. Yeah, good card, good card. If you I ever just... wanted to play a natural order, if you hate money, you can. Yes. But if you like money, you can play Magus of the Order, who is a human wizard, 3-3 three, three for green, green, 2. It has green, tap, sack it, and, and another green creature. Search your library for a green creature card, put it into play, shuffle your library. Oh, baby. Ooh. That's going to get somebody hoofed. Every time. Yeah, I think every time I've ever cast natural order, it's found a crater hoof. Including the last time I did it against Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, he's he's 7 out of 10, too. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah, fuck that guy. All right, Natural Reclamation. Five mana, instant speed, disenchant, or naturalize, but it has Cascade. That's a gooder. Green, Ooh. green, green, six. You were looking right at the same card I was. Sorcery. Reshape the Earth. Search your library for up to 10 land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. This, sir, is where you play the opposition agent. <laughs> yes. This shouldn't be called reshape the earth. This should be called reshape lips, dinks, and assholes. Yes. Yeah, because this is going to landfall you times 10, which is powerful. People are comparing it to like the scape shift, splendid reclamation type combo or cards or interactions. It's going to achieve what those two cards do for four mana and four mana, respectively. Yep. Yep. This costs nine, but is on one card. Yeah, I suppose if you got one slot and you, you're not a graveyard deck, you might not want your Splendid Wreck, but most land decks are. Yeah. I and mean, this is going to go in yeah. land decks, right? Yeah, this is the land deck card, I assume. And I mean, if you're, or the, like if you're the lands deck or the not just the land fall deck, like your 77 land deck yes. would do well to play this. Ooh, except it runs ad nauseum. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you are you a wimp? <laughs> I was gonna say, What's wrong I, with you? I ain't no bitch though. Yeah. Are you gonna play an Omnath? No. Oh. No. I don't too, need too it. many too many manas or you just don't need I it. I don't need it. You just don't need to cut something that's gonna find you three land and, and deal like fifteen. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm already doing fifty and I don't need to do fifty. I'm already gonna do fifty probably. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Root Reaver Druid, that lets everybody search. So that's another one with Opposition Agent. And then what they search for, we get one and they get one. You search for lands, right? That's fine. That's a hell of a card. Yeah, that's a cool one. Hey, that, I really that, like that that's one. That's kind of like um, Veteran Explorer, except you don't require it to die. That's one of those cards I think that there are going to be people who abuse it for sure. Oh, yeah. But I think that you could play that in a super casual deck, and it's like, hey, guys, here we go. Yep. Let's just let's casual, speed the game up. Let's get to our six drops. This is another course correcting card where yep. where it's let's all make sure we can all have a good time. I right? like cards like this because it kind of does what uh, what is it rights of flourishing? Yes, will do for you. Yes, that's what I was going to compare it to. But it's less punishing on the off chance that your deck kind of shits the bed. Yes, whereas rights of flourishing they're drawing cards and playing land, and you're like you get left behind. Whereas yes. here it's everybody gets ramped. Everybody's if kind I'm of playing in the same spot. casual group hug dot decks, uh, group hugs kind of loosely, right? Yeah. I'm playing casual deck that includes rights of flourishing, and you're playing a deck that has just more powerful cards that I'm letting you draw more of. Yeah. That's the downside of rights of flourishing is you're giving your opponents that are playing better fucking cards than you more cards. Yeah. This just gives everybody land. And it's cool. Everybody's gonna like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's gonna buy you a turn. Nobody will hit you if you play a root weaver druid. I like for that. At least a round of the table. And and if they do, then you can just block because you've already got your value out of it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we talked three visits a little bit. It is rampant growth. Rampant growth. Whatever. Yeah, for, it's it's the eighty dollar rampant growth for any forest card into play untapped, so it can find your duels if you're doing that. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's nature's lore. Is yeah. what it is because it searches for forest, yeah. right? It, it's but, a cool card. Yeah. It's got great art on it. I really like that. So play them if you find them. Hopefully the price stays down nice. Yeah. And are there us. are there foil full arts of that one? Because that's a dope ass card to get a foil full yes. art of because it's an uncommon. 
Yes. Dang. Yeah. Those that's... are going to be cool. I hope I open one of those. Yeah. I'll, the, I bet you, bet you some of those might find their way to the Facebook auctions. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay. All of the gold cards are legendary. So we're going to skip ahead on those till tomorrow. Let's look and see if there's any artifacts. Again, we see some prolific reprints in things like Arcane Signet. We see the Diamond Cycle being reprinted. Commander Sphere, that totally jank, unplayable garbage. Yeah. Why weren't the diamonds the medallions? Like? I have no clue. We might touch on those in our hits and misses yeah. video, maybe. Yeah, I know I ask that every time I see something stupid like this, but come on. That, that, we'll talk about that later. Yep. Commander's Plate. This is secretly one of the most expensive cards in the set because it's a mythic, it's a... It's a it, Equip commander specific things so they can kind of ratchet the power level up, like like Blackblade Reforged, yes, which we did see a reprint of in the dual or in the precons. We did give this one a read. One mana for this. One mana for commander's plate. It is an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus three plus three and has protection from each color that's not in its color identity. Equip your commander for three. Equip something else for five. Yeah, I call that Animar protection. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that is. I dig this. So it gets worse the more colors you have access to in your deck. Which is great because who wants equipment? What color and or colors want equipment in their deck? White and Boros. There it is. And you put that in your white and Boros deck and all of a sudden you're, you're getting a buff for three mana on your commander, which is great. And you're giving protection from... The three biggest colors. Three or four colors. Yeah. That's excellent. That's very cool. Yeah, and the foil full arts of that one are like 50 bucks or something, or 30, 38 bucks or something. It's like, that one's secretly expensive. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm happy to see a Grafted Warrior reprint. That's an equip for zero, plus three, plus two. And if it becomes unequipped, you sacrifice that permanent, which is, don't care. Yeah. That's a good one. How about Horizon Stone? Horizon Stone, the five mana artifact. If you would lose unspent mana, that mana becomes colorless instead. That gives everything Crufix mana bank ability. Neat. Yeah, I think that that's a welcome addition to... It costs five, so like... Eh. It's a very casual type thing, I think. It's going to fall in lots of casual decks. If you're playing not green and you're leaving like mana up for removal or interaction or whatever, and it's like, oh, I didn't need to remove anything this turn. I didn't need to flash in my Hall Breacher, for example. Or my whatever. End end of like player force turn, you just tap out, you just bank all that mana. Yeah. And then the next turn you cast your chroma like maybe two turns ahead of schedule. Like it. Yeah. That's, that's, a, neat a, card. that's a cool one. Do we do we do it? Do we? Do we? Do we go all in? I think we have to. Anal bead lotus? I like that. I just made that up. Good. Cause that is A alters every Thursday on our Facebook page. <laughs> And two, you can stick this card right up your fucking ass. Not because it's so powerful. It's just so much rage. Man, the rage on this one. Just put some spit on it and stuff it. Right? Just It's, it's going to impact some games, yeah. It's going to create some non-games. It's going to be a dead draw on a bunch of stuff. I've got one deck that will play it. Yep. Of all of my decks, I went through, I did a thing. How many of my decks Which deck? want this? Muxus. Because turn two Muxus is... Probably pretty fucking yes. good. And if I draw it later in the game, I probably will have already played Muxus and have him die. Yes. So now I can play Muxus again. Yes. So Muxus wants to do with Lotus. This will contribute to non-games, yes. If you play 100 games of Commander in a year, which is, I think, generous for the every person, how many games is it going to affect turn one Jeweled Lotus? You lose the game. Yeah, like, there's going to be some games maybe where you're going to trace it back, man, if you didn't play Grand Arbiter turn one. Well, of course, because you played Grand Arbiter turn fucking one. Yeah. I think that, de- like, is it a parasitic card? That's I don't think so. I think it's the 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 hate swirling around it that's the more parasitic I think it's, thing. I think it's already starting to wear off, especially yeah. when you look at the price trend of it. <laughs> yeah, like this thing's going to, it's going down. If you want to play it, go ahead. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not saying if you can afford it, because this isn't a buy-in card. This isn't a mana crypt or a mana vault. It's not those things. You know what you know what this feels like? This card feels a little bit to me like Vampiric Tutor. D- did or does if they kind of land at a similar price point. It's like even even Demonic Tutor. It's not a buy-in to play the format, like you say, but it is good. Yeah. And it, it, it maybe it's the functional equivalent to a mana vault. 
that's like 40, 50 bucks, whatever it costs, right? Sure. And it gives you that burst of acceleration, right? I was even going as far as comparing this card to Lotus Petal. We had that conversation yeah. where it's like, okay, I'm playing a three color commander. This only gives me one color. And I'm just going to throw away the other two of that color because I can't, can't do it. I can't do anything with them. And it's like, is is this Lotus Petal number two? Is this worth it? Like, and I trolled Twitter hard on this. Whenever I saw somebody raging about it, I just jumped right the fuck in there off the top rope. Eh? <laughs> Dude, Lotus tattoo on my elbow. It's like, I don't know, man. I yes, it's it's very powerful. It lets you cast your commander essentially at the cost of a card, and no commander tax later in the game if it's died. Like you're saying with Muxus, right? Yep. It's great. Turn two Muxus is great. Turn one Lady Emery Lady in the Lock combo. Turn one is great. Like turn two fucking yeah. It Whatever. It, it's incredible. Cool. But, and outside of those, it's just there. Yeah. And it's fun. Outside of that, it lets, let's look at the, let's look at the bright side. Let's look at what this lets you do in fun EDH games. The first thing that I thought of when I saw this card was, oh man, maybe I really can build Una. Yes. I've always wanted to build Una, but she costs six. And then you need to dump more mana into her. So you need to have like 10 before you play her. Yep. Well, now I can play Una on turn three or four and... Then on turn five, maybe I can start using her to, to make little dudes and cool. You know what I mean? That's the first thing I thought of. Maybe there's going to be some seven, eight, nine drop commander that you've always wanted to build, but you can't. This could maybe help with that. Yeah, I like that. You know, like, I like that. Your, your six mana commander is going to fucking die. And since it's not Omnath, you don't have enough land to play it again for the rest of the game. <laughs> so this will help you. So in that way, I think that Jeweled Lotus is actually kind of welcome. I, I I said it. There it is. There it is. So there's Jeweled Lotus. You like know, it. You know what don't the first, like it. You know Fuck. what the first thing I thought of was when I seen it? What's that? I thought, uh-oh, this is going to be a fucking nightmare on Twitter for the next 48 hours. <laughs> That's, what <I> <laughs> That's what I thought. Because Gavin previewed it on Twitter or whatever, and he goes, Black Lotus for your commander. Need I say more? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, Gavin, you yeah. probably should have said some Yeah, more. the tweet was at like one minute old, and there was like 400 fucking comments on it already. <laughs> what the fuck you doing? Get out of my format. Watsy money stealing bastards. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. We've got Maelstrom Colossus. That's a 7-7 seven, seven Cascader for just fucking eight. That's great. Phyrexian Triniform. That's the nine drop colorless one that gives you Encore for 12. lets you get three of them when it dies. It's Let's fucking bad. Ah. It's a cool one. Reprint of Scroll Rack? I'm pumped for this. Oh, dude. I'm excited for this. And it's because now people can actually play Scroll Rack, and people will stop hating Scroll Rack so much when I play it because they can play it, or they tried it, and they don't like it. Yeah. Because lots of people play Scroll Rack, and they're like, what the fuck? There's lots of times I play Scroll Rack. I'm like, oh, god damn it. You got to have cards in your hand. This AKA sucks. AKA not red. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what deck I played in? Moxus. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you destroy my scroll rack? Yeah, Goblin Recruiter, then scroll rack, get all the cards? The, no. Oh. No. <laughs> That's not how it works. No, you play it before you play the Goblin Recruiter so you can put all the shit that you've drawn into your hand that you want on the top onto the top. And oh. then you play Muxus to get them all back. Oh. Yeah, dude. That's how it works. I Jesus get it. Jesus. Staff Christ. of Domination reprint never owned this card once, and it's like 50 bucks. Boom. Thought Vessel, 12 bucks. Boom. Command Beacon. Boom. Path of Ancestry, boom, we're getting all these reprints out of the way. And then, of course, the, the Battle Bond cycle being reprinted, spectator seating. Finished. These are the, these are new ones, aren't they? Uh, these are the enemy color ones. Oh, yeah, what, what did I say? Reprinted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. F finished. Sorry, yeah, these are the enemy color ones. That's right, that's right. Now, we've talked about all of the most expensive cards in the set, and we're getting a little bit long for you to edit this, but I know that you want to talk about Blazing Sunsteel, and oh. then I want to read you a list and tell people that we're going to have a little conversation about this. Okay, oh my, I'm going to, I'm going to play for you and all the people an actual recording of me <laughs> after I realized what this card actually does. That's an actual recording of me after I realized what I was looking at. Guy on Twitter, he sent it to me. He was like, man, this is awesome with Brash Taunter. And I was like, I don't think it works. And then he was like, no, nah, you got to read the card, Brando. And then I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, give it a read. Blazing Sunsteel is an artifact equipment for red one. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus oh for each opponent you have. 
don't care. Whenever an equipped creature is dealt damage, uh-oh, it deals that much damage to any target. So as soon as Brash Taunter takes a damage, <laughs> he's going to do a damage to something, and then a damage to himself, which will do another damage to something, which will do another damage to itself. Oh! So you equip, and then you fight, and then you go infinite. And then you win. Honestly. Infinite Brash Taunter. Well, that is excellent. God damn it, I'm so pumped for that card. That's excellent. Of course, Sun. what is it called? Blazing Sunsteel is Blazing part Sun of... Steel. Six new cards that were reprinted in the Commander deck precons. The right? precons. There's lots of great reprints in there. We don't have time to go over all of them as swords. There's Beast Within. There's Generous Gifts. There's all kinds of really great stuff in there. So check out the lists for those wherever you find your deck lists. Yeah. And maybe pick them up. There's lots of good stuff to for for the old and the new player alike. Yeah. Maybe we'll talk about them a little bit on YouTube. Maybe we won't. I, they're they're precons. They're like thirty bucks, so they're cheap because there's mostly just reprints. The card values go up as high as a few dollars, which is some cool reprints like the swords with first time ever non foil judge art, right? And just good commander staples. So if you're new or if you're giving them as a gift, these are great because they're going to set somebody up, and the 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 Simic one is pretty powerful. Yeah, and we'll we'll talk about the the face cards when we get to to the other one. If you want to hear us talk about Stump Swell Hydra. We did that in our in our last show last week. Yeah, very much so. Now, last kind of the last thing I want to talk about today. Okay. The cards that if you get foil and or full arts and or foil full arts, they will make you drink your entire drink. If we're playing open flippy dot drinky or v open flippy dot drinky. And those are these are the cards that Brando says if you don't open these, you're gonna get pounded on your box. Right. So let's see, let's see which which cards they are. Okay. Jeweled Lotus, most expensive card, foil full art in the deck. It's like five hundred dollars. Yes, won't hold that, but that's what it is now. That's what it's at, P current pre-order price. Yep. So if you don't pre-order them, if you're listening to this, <laughs> don't pre-order them at that price. Yeah, that's Cause, right. Because you're the same unfortunate soul that pre-ordered that Godzilla Death Corona for three hundred dollars, yeah. and now you're just taking a bath and you're using it as a sponge yeah. to wash your taint. Do not pay five hundred dollars for this card. If you open one in your pre-release box and there's a vendor willing to take it from you, offload it when the price is high. Take their money. Yes. Take it. Yep. Moving on. I've got the top 10, actually. So let's let's blow through them. We've got Jeweled Lotus. Show you. Mana Drain. Hell yeah. I think this is a good pickup. It's going to be cheap. It's always going to be worth more than $100 because it's one of the best counter spells in the game. Correct. Yeah. Okay. The same can be true, but f Tutor instead of counter, with Vampiric Tutor. Yes. Got reprinted in Ultimate Masters or whatever, still over 100 bucks. Yep. Yeah, okay. Scroll Rack. This is a card that might be more expensive due to availability, but I think the more it gets played, it's going to have the Tarmogoyf effect. More people are going to see that they do want to play it. Yeah. yeah. It, it took a pretty stiff dive once it got reprinted, so now is the time. Yeah. It, it's going to probably go back up. Yeah, where do they fit this into a set going forward? At at Even it's even if it's dipped even at its dipped price, you can't just put it into a precon. See Oracle of Moldiah. Yes. Being forty dollars, the dip price of Scroll Rock is like sixty. Yeah. Okay. Opposition agent. Of course. Of course. That's gonna see his CDH play. It's gonna see playing Legacy. Big money. Even vintage, maybe. Let's lump Hull Breacher same category. I can't believe they were two bucks. <laughs> they were two bucks. Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Commander's Plate. I think this one might dip, but we also might see it get reprinted again next year and next year and next year, right? Like, that feels like a card that we're going to see a lot more of. Yeah. So It's I'm, generic. It's got generic art. It's, yeah. If there's flavor text, I guarantee it's generic. Yeah. I'm not pounding a beer for that one. That one comes off the list. Foil foil art, though. No. Nah. No? Nope. Well, I'll pound one for you. Because this time next year, we'll be like, yeah, Commander's Plates and all the precons. It's kind of like Commander's Helm, which is... After it's been reprinted in anthologies once as like a twelve dollar card, yeah. it had a masterpiece in Kaladesh that's Neat. like worth sixty. Yeah. Fine, sure. Pounded beer for that one, maybe. If I got a masterpiece, oh yeah. Yeah, if I open a Kaladesh masterpiece in my in my Commander Legends, fuck, fuck yeah, yeah. I pound, pound every pound beer, beer in the house. Yeah, dude. All right, all right. Rings of Bright Hearth. Shit, yeah. This is this is a scarcity thing because Lorwyn, right? Yeah. That okay. was a Lorwyn rare that's playable in Commander. That's being reprinted for the first time. Get your foil full arts, right? Get them. Yeah. Okay. Get them. Get them. Get them. Last one. Oh, th then put them in a deck. Then cut them and play Illusionist Bracers instead. There you go. Continue. Or or what, what's the uh, Lithoform Engine? Yes, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Thrasios etched foil. 
Of course. Yeah, because Thrasios is like seven, eighty bucks, or whatever. Yeah, right? what, what does his ability say? Tap four mana, win target game. Is that how that works? Mostly. Yeah. Yeah, there's some minutia there, but yeah. that's how it works. Fuck them. Yeah. So if you get those cards, trade them in before they dip or jam them in decks, whichever you prefer. If you know what, if 10 year old Ryan opened up any of those cards and I opened up an Inquest Gamer and saw what the price of those cards were, I'd want to keep it. Right? So I'm not going to fault anybody for keeping high value cards. Oh, no. Because that that it just feels good to open, and that is like that is the crux of open flippy dot drinky. What does it feel good to open? Yeah, and or, it, or it, how do you fucking just pound your friend if yeah. he fucking doesn't open one? It feels good to open a card that you know is worth a bunch of money. It's like finding a, a treasure if you're digging a hole and there's a treasure chest there and you open it up and it's full of gold doubloons. You're oh, like, oh, my this favorite is so kind awesome. of doubloons, right? It's so awesome, and it's the same thing. That's why we open packs. That's why gambling is popular. Yes. And I'm sorry for talking about magic and gambling in the same podcast, but you know. Yeah, that's why people d try drugs. Yeah. Uh, also sorry for mentioning that, but like <laughs> it, there's a lot of like psychological play that affects us the same way with those three things. And at least opening up a full art foil jeweled lotus isn't going to hurt us. Yeah. You know, we haven't lost our house. We haven't lost our health. We've paid $8 for a booster pack. And we opened a very expensive card. Yeah, maybe it's going to gain us. Who knows? Yeah, maybe as long it'll as that price us. doesn't dip too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's it for the set review. That's the biggest set review. Again, let us know favorite cards, favorite commanders. That's going to be maybe a comment on tomorrow's show. Thank our glorious sponsors. Remember, everybody, you can get your stuff there. CCO Fusion 5 promo code gets you 5% off your singles when all of the Commander Legend stuff goes up because there is more than just what we talked about. Correct. Thank you very much, FusionGamingOnline.com. They are our sponsor and your source for all your gaming needs. Thank you all for sitting with us as we waxed poetic about the good and the bad, about the best of the rest in Commander Legends, and we are going to be back tomorrow to talk about all of the legends and all of the decks that you could possibly build on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song!